before we kind of talk about what we were talking about, the discrepancy between maybe what the public is is feeling or saying versus, you know, what's actually going on and what your agency is kind of um, clarifying. Um, I don't know if you can, can speak to kind of where that, that smoke is coming from. Our meteorologists are saying it is coming from that Olympic National Forest fire, but I wanted to see if that resonated with you guys as well. Yeah, so we have an air quality forecaster who's looking at all different kinds of models, air quality models, weather models. The winds right now are coming from the south-southwest. So some of this upper level smoke that we might be seeing today or are seeing today um, could be a little bit of residual smoke from those fires that are more western. So yes, southwestern flow is possibly sending some of that smoke. Fortunately, it's remaining in the upper atmosphere at this point. Perfect. And um, yeah, just some of the chatter I've been seeing online in different Facebook groups and community groups, people are wondering about, you know, the smoke and just how orange the skies were this morning. But obviously your agency says air quality is still good. So can you clarify kind of that discrepancy and how your agency measures things to kind of just educate yeah. the public? Right. And I think it's great that people are becoming more aware of their surroundings in terms of air quality. I think that's a great thing. Um, and we do see uh, quite a significant uptick in our website views where you can check the air quality every hour. Um, but oftentimes visibility does not translate directly to air quality. We are measuring on rooftops. So basically at ground level where we all breathe. And so that's the air quality, of course, that we're most concerned about. So sometimes like last year, we saw quite a bit of pattern that would bring the smoke in, but it would remain trapped in the upper atmosphere and it didn't always sink down to ground level. So uh, we had a decent year last year in terms of smoke. Uh, we're hoping for the same this year, of course, but we've got several weeks left of uh, a dangerous, uh, potentially dangerous uh, conditions. And if any new fires break out, you know, air quality might be good right now. And we might expect air quality to be good tomorrow as well. But as we know, if, if new fires break out, if the winds shift direction, um, it's quite common during wildfire season to see smoke shift. So, uh, but right now the models are telling us that uh, air quality should remain in the good. We might we might fall into the moderate uh, an hour here, hour there. Uh, but right now our models are showing um, good air quality. Yeah, and I want to punctuate that even more from what you're saying, you know, that smoke is staying more in the atmosphere, and you guys measure at ground level. Could you just kind of regurgitate kind of that that we were speaking to on the phone to further educate the public a little bit? You bet. So we have a network of air quality regulatory monitors, which are supplemented with sensors. And the highest value from among all those regulatory monitors is what drives our current air quality. So when you're on our website, you can go down to the map and you can see the monitor or sensor closest to where you live. Uh, but we are required to report the highest AQI among all of the monitors in our in our area. Um, and so we're monitoring through this network of pretty sophisticated air quality monitoring uh, tools and equipment, we're monitoring the air where we breathe, right? So we're, we have a network of monitors that are considered ground level. I mean, they're not at ground level. They're usually on a one-story rooftop um, at various locations throughout Spokane County. And so we're um, charged with monitoring ambient air quality near ground level because that's where we're breathing. So, um, I, yeah, I think the consensus is, you know, people, you should stay hyper aware, should stay concerned. But at this time, even with what they're seeing outside, um, as of right now, because things can change, like you said, and just regurgitating what you're saying, is that um, air quality where we are is fine at the moment. So um, I think that's really what I wanted to capture. So so that's good to know. Um, yeah, that's important for people to know that visibility Visibility doesn't always translate to air quality. There's not always a direct correlation, especially if the pollutants stay aloft. Perfect. And um, actually, Lisa, could you repeat that one more time? I'm going to put myself on full mute before you say that, um, but I really liked what you just said. Could you just repeat it one more time? You bet. There is not always a direct connection between visibility and air quality. So sometimes it cannot look so great out there, but if the pollutants remain above us in the upper atmosphere, then air quality isn't necessarily affected. So sometimes it looks worse than it is. And you can have the reverse true. 
Um, sometimes we can have pollutants in the air that are that are invisible. And so that's why it's always great to, to check in with the current air quality. Um, and it's available in so many locations, including our website at spokanecleanair.org. Perfect. And then I saw on your website just before we met, um, there is a, I think, a new air quality testing center as of recently. I think it's near a high school. Is that correct? We are getting ready to um, get our new our newest air monitoring site online. It's actually going to be at Ridgeline High School. And um, it will be a regulatory grade monitor. So it'll be nice to have more monitoring in the um, far eastern part of our county. So Perfect. How many of those uh, monitoring areas are there in the county? Do you know? Do you have like a number at all? Oh, gosh, I should know this. <laughs> I would have to go to our map to, to count just to be sure because we've added so many. Um, and then some are just like, there, we have some sites that are ozone. So so our two main pollutants, or three main pollutants in Spokane are PM 2.5, which are the small smoke particles, combustion particles. And then we have PM 10, particulate matter 10, which is the size, 10 microns. And that's more of the dust. So this time of year when it's really dry, in fact, our forecast today is calling for some potential dust when those winds kick up this afternoon. So that would be PM10. So it won't be surprising if our AQI switches from PM2.5 being the leading pollutant to PM10 when we start seeing some of that dust in the air. And so depending on how the winds, uh, how active the winds are and the dust, we could see some issues with some blowing dust this afternoon. And then the third pollutant is ozone, which is monitored only during the summer. That's a summer pollutant, which is um, all of the transportation pollution from um, gas, lean powered equipment, transportation, solvents and chemicals that we use. All of those uh, volatile organic compounds react in the presence of sunlight to form ozone. So ozone is most prevalent on hot, sunny days. So those are the three pollutants that we monitor for. And so some of our monitoring sites measure one or the other or all of them. So I would have to go to our monitoring site and count them all up. But we have at least a dozen that are measuring 2.5. Perfect. I think I'll use that. At least a dozen for Spokane County. Um, yeah, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll email you the exact amount because I, I don't like I don't like not being, you know, really accurate. No, that's um, okay. Yes. Yeah. No, go yeah, go ahead and email me. That will be perfect. And I will send it off to our producers this afternoon. Yeah. And then one other, one other thing, Reagan, that I like to point out, because this happened a few summers ago during wildfire season. Um, and I think to, you know, new, new, new reporters and new folks, but we were having, so it was wildfire season. And we had been like the day before we had, had some wildfire smoke. And like that afternoon, our air quality had gone into unhealthy and it was reported that it was smoke. But if you actually looked at why the air quality was unhealthy, it was PM10 and it was real windy and we were having some serious dust. So just it's a it's a it's a. You know, something we it's pay a, attention to, maybe not, a, maybe not the layman out there, but it's, yeah. in, you know, it's important to know that this time of year we can have dust and smoke. And I, I guess the point is if the air quality is unhealthy, it's unhealthy. You know, uh, maybe people aren't particularly concerned with what pollutant it was. But I think I think maybe there was concern that there was there was more wildfires um, because of that. And it was actually more of the dust. So no, um, I don't know if you're familiar with our website, but if you go to our Spokane Clean Air website and look at our current air quality you know, on our landing page, we have a link. So on our landing page, we have at spokanecleanair.org, we have um, current air quality. See, we've dipped into the moderate. So if you click on that underline air quality index, it takes you to our actual air quality, current air quality webpage. And if you scroll down, that's where you see the map, okay? So it looks like Sprague and Haven, uh, the monitoring site at Sprague and Haven has gone to moderate just barely into the moderate. So uh, we expect that this time of year to kind of be in and out. Um, we forecast what we think the majority of the day will be. So if we think 20 hours are going to be good air quality and maybe four hours are going to be moderate, our forecast may be for green because that's the majority of the day is going to be at green. Um, but just okay. like the weather forecast, it's not perfect. <laughs> no, I know. It's, it's never perfect because always, everything always changes. But I think that's a good call out. Uh, sometimes it is smoke, but sometimes it is dust because, you know, with either high wind advisory or wind warnings, that dust can kick up just as much yeah. as, you know, smoke is entering the, the area. As yeah. So I will, I will yeah. make sure producers know like, yeah. Hey, if we're going to report on this, we want to make, make sure that 
air quality can be affected or impacted both by smoke, but also dust with um, winds in the area too. So, And if they're checking the air quality on our webpage, right under the value, it says what the pollutant is. Okay, perfect. It says it, it'll say ozone, PM10, or PM2.5. Perfect. So anyway. And so just... And just so I'm, I want to make sure I say it one more time. So I remember it. So ozone only in the summertime, the PM2 is the dust, correct? Or is it the PM10? So PM2.5 is particulate matter that's 2.5 microns in diameter or smaller, mm -hmm. um, much, much smaller than a human hair, which mm -hmm. is about 80. Mm -hmm. So these are microscopic smoke particles. So combustion, combustion based whether it's combustion from your automobile engine or combustion from a wildfire. So PM 2.5 are the smallest. And that health standard was established in 1999. And on our homepage, we have an article with a link to a chart. And the chart lists all the days that we were unhealthy and the cause. So you can go back and see since 99, how many issues we've been having with PM 2.5 and what the cause was. So anyway, we have 2.5. Then you have... PM10, which is particle matter 10 microns and smaller. So 2.5 is a subset. In fact, we had such heavy wildfire smoke in 2020 that we violated both the 2.5 and the 10 because we had so much PM2.5 in the air, if that makes sense. So 2.5 is a subset of 10. So PM10 is gonna be mainly your dust particles. So when we have windblown dust, when we have issues with um, uh, unpaved surfaces and lots with dirt blowing around. That is going to be more of your PM10 and 2.5 will be more of the smoke. Okay. I think that is a great distinction. And I'm going to make sure I point that out specifically to our producers who will be writing, writing up uh, your interview today. Um, no, that's great. Thank you so much, Lisa. Um, anything else I didn't ask or I missed, or you want to make sure it gets cleared up? Um, just about what I was asking about earlier or anything else about today and looking into, you know, the rest of this week? Well, the, you know, I, it's wildfire season. Um, we've been somewhat fortunate so far this year in the Spokane area that um, the smoke hasn't uh, been significantly heavy in our area, but it's, it's still early. Uh, we're entering the dangerous season. So I would just uh, encourage everyone to visit smokereadyspokane.org. Uh, and those are uh, that's a, a, a one stop shopping resource on everything wildfire smoke related, setting up a cleaner air space in your home, um, all kinds of resources there. So uh, just be prepared because summer's not over yet. Perfect. And then lastly, um, just so I, I can ask you and not Google it later, what is what do you guys officially call your uh, your I want to say testing centers, um, your monitoring centers? Like what are those what are those like? you guys officially call them? Well, we call them, you know, and like on our map, um, you know, on our air quality reporting page, we call them air monitor, air quality monitoring sites. Okay. Air quality, air quality monitoring sites. Okay. I just want to, I don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, so anyways, that, that sounds it's good. Not, yeah. It could, some people say air quality measurement sites. Some people say air quality testing sites, you know, it's, they're interchangeable. We tend okay. to say monitoring. Okay. And they're, Perfect. they're, you know, they're 24 seven. So we're monitoring around the clock. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Well, Lisa, right. thank you. Thank you so much for quickly hopping on. I really appreciate it.